looking at a book today um, that has a lot of landscapes in it. So let's talk about how an artist makes things look far or close. Now, a landscape is um, an illusion, really. It's kind of magic. So let's look at some landscapes. So um, it's a little shiny. There you go. Um, this is a two-dimensional surface. It has a height and a width. It does not have a depth. So when an artist is making a landscape, they're trying to create the illusion of that third dimension. So that's the magic. So <laughs> they're trying to make it look like this is far away, that you could go in here and get in a boat and go far away. Okay, so what I want to talk about a little bit, and we're going to draw a landscape later, but first let's talk about how they do that. Okay, and it's pretty simple um, and it is kind of magical. So let's turn to my little drawing pad here. So one of the ways they do this is they change the size. So I'm going to draw up here um, a little baby landscape. I think you can see that. Yep. So first one is size. When you change the size, it gets further away. So if I have a ball and I throw it across the yard, it's still the same size, right? It's still a ball that's this big, but I threw it away. I threw it across the yard, so it got smaller. Okay. And then I pick it up because I didn't like how far I threw it and I throw it even further. And then my dog runs and gets it and brings it back to me. But the ball stays the same size physically, but it looks smaller. So that makes smaller looks further away. Okay. Another way that artists do this, and we're going to put them all together here in a bit, is um, overlap. Now, all of this applies to a landscape, but it also applies to a still life or a portrait, um, because you always have a background on a portrait. Um, so these are kind of hard and fast rules that are going to help you. So I have a ball and one dog goes and gets it. I like the dog illustration. And he sets it down and it's nice and close. And then my other dog gets the other ball, whoops, and sets it down next to it. Which ball is closer? B dot ball or A ball, okay? If you see all of it, it's closer because this one's covering up part of it, so it has to be closer. Same as your hands, right? This hand is closer because it's covering up or overlapping this hand. Okay, so overlap is another one. <clears throat> now, this one's tricky. A lot of people call it different things. <clears throat> I like to call it placement. Because, so everything is placed close to the horizon line. Okay, so what you have to have is a horizon line. Okay. A lot of people tell you if it's further away, it's higher on the page. Okay, even if they're about the same size. They're all about the same size. So this one's higher on the page, right? So it's further away. But what's really the case is closer to the horizon line, HL, horizon line. So if my balls are up in the air or they're clouds, we'll make them clouds now, okay? Okay, so closer to the horizon line, here's a cloud, and clouds don't really look like this, is further away. And especially as soon as I start adding size, size, closer to the horizon line is further away. See how it looks like it's going back in space? So it's placement, where it's placed according to the horizon line is what's really important with this. Um, let's see, the next one is contrast. So let's draw another square. Contrast. Now, up close, I see that this is a, a ball. And the light's coming from here. That's the brand. It's made by ball, right? <laughs> and I see all the lights in the darks. And I see shadows. And far away, you don't. You don't have strong lights and darks. It's just kind of grayed out. So contrast. There's less contrast here. Lots of contrast. There's a lot of pieces of the value square, squares to the value scale. So light to dark, light to dark, and medium values. These are values, in case you wonder. Okay, so dark values, 
medium values, and light values. So I have all of these values going up close, and I have just these values going further away. So this is less contrast. When you have all the values here, you have more contrast. When you have wherever you're at, you have less contrast. So more contrast is closer, less contrast is further away. Now, the, all, the other thing, and I'll put it here, is clarity. That means details. And let's go up to here. See, I see the word ball on here, but I don't see it here. Okay, so you have less details further away. Underline them so you know. Less details further away. And then the last one is color. And we're going black and white, but I'll just show you. Um, far away or closer to the horizon line is cooler. And up close is warmer. So we're talking reds, yellows, oranges, cooler, blues, violets, greens if there's a blue green, and greens here if it's a yellow green. <laughs> so green kind of goes back and forth. So does really purple, because a purple can be red violet. Now, you can have cool colors back here, or, cool, or warm colors back here, like a yellow flower could be far away, but it's going to be cooler. It's gonna be a little greener, or a little bluer green, or a little bluer, okay? Up close, it's gonna be a brighter yellow, okay? So, uh, and you can have green stems and blue areas here, but back here, it's gonna be more faded. So when you combine all of these things is when you really start to get um, an idea of um, how to create space. And the next drawing that we're gonna look at is actually how I'm creating that space with the drawing. Mm -hmm.